if you are creating multiplayer games, optimizing the data which the players send and receive over the network is crucial for both cost and stability. In this video, we are going to check how many bytes the different solutions like RPCs, network variables, etc. consume and give you some benchmark info for the new Netcode for Game Objects networking solution. First of all, we will need some initial packages which you can download from Unity's package manager. The first one is going to be the Netcode for Game Objects and the second one is Multiplayer Tools. It itself is very simple. It contains two buttons, a host and the client button. Let's start the network manager as a host. Three buttons will appear and clicking on any of them will instantiate a prefab which will send some data over the network. Let's start with RPCs. We are simply sending two client RPCs, one without any parameters and one with two floats. I will start one of the clients as the host and the other one as a client. As the client connects to the host, you can see that the host periodically sends a ping to the client. Now, if I click on the RPC button, then a game object will be instantiated with the RPC test script. And voila, suddenly the send bytes will increase quite a bit. Now, let's open a profiler to see more about the RPCs. Let's scroll to the NGO messages and select the spike in the timeline. Here is all the data sent by the instantiated game objects in the current frame. There are two different messages, one with 18 bytes and the other with 26 bytes. The reason behind the difference in byte size is that the float size in C-sharp is 4 bytes and we call the first RPC without any parameters and the second RPC with two float variables. Now, the strange part is that even the RPC method without any parameters has an 18 byte size. It is important to know that if you want to send, for instance, an integer of the player's health points, the package transmitted through the internet does not only contain your data, in this case an integer, but rather some additional overhead which can be quite large compared to your data. For example, a timestamp of the event or maybe an ID of the sender client. In the next test, we are going to use a network variable, in this case an integer. They behave a little bit differently from RPCs. A network variable is basically a synchronized variable and the server will only send it to the clients if its value is modified. That's why we are using a coroutine to increase this int by one continuously. After starting the client as a host, let's spawn a prefab with the network variable test script attached to it and then let's open the profiler to see the results. As you can see, 5 bytes were sent. When Unity synchronizes a network variable, it doesn't send the original data, but instead just the delta value, which in ideal cases can be much less than the original value. Compared to RPCs, the overhead is much less, however, the use cases of the two solutions are quite different as well. Last but not least, let's check the built-in network transform component. In this example, we will sync only the X and Z coordinates of the position and the Z angle of the rotation. The attached random mover script just simply randomly changes these variables every frame. After instantiating the prefab, I will open the profiler and check the results. We are synchronizing three float variables, which is 12 bytes altogether, and additionally, the message contains a timestamp. Because it is possible that the message which was sent sooner arrives later, and in that case, we don't want to update the transform. This timestamp is a double variable with 8 bytes. Behind the scenes, network transform is more complex. For instance, it interpolates the coordinates and sends the data only if it has changed by more than, a, than the threshold value. It is worth mentioning that under the hood, network transform uses network variables, which means, for example, when it sends a position, it only sends a data value. 